Hey there, Wolfpack fans. I know that the NFL draft is coming up, and don't worry, we've already dropped yesterday's NFL draft episode. But today, we are going to talk to you all about the basketball team again because it has come out that Casey Marcel and Isaiah Miranda have entered their names into the NBA draft. We're going to be talking about it because their time to come back from the draft is much short or much larger rather than the window for the transfer portal closing. And we've got a target. And it seems to me that we need a scholarship. So Grayson and I are going to try to figure this thing out and work this thing out. We're going to do our best Kevin Keats and Levi Watkins impressions today. Grayson, you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's get it. All righty. Well, let's get into all things Wolfpack basketball on today's episode of Locked on Wolfpack. You are Locked On NC State, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So first of all, we've got to start here. Guard Casey Morsell. Forward Isaiah Miranda, both of their names have been entered into the 2023 NBA draft. Grayson, give me your initial thoughts. Now, now, mind you, Casey Marcel said that he was going to collect feedback and come back. We have heard no such statement from Isaiah Miranda, but he did say that uh, Wolfpack Nation, we got something special coming next year. So it, you would believe he's coming back. But what are your thoughts on both of these players' names being in the NBA draft at the moment? Yeah, I mean, as fluid as these situations can be at times, I'm not sure this is something that we should worry about as Wolfpack fans. Um, you know, like you just mentioned with Casey Morsell, he kind of laid out what the next couple of months are going to look like for him. I believe this is a month or so ago when he sat down with Inside Pack Sports, but he said, I'm going to be putting my name in the draft. I'm going to be going through the process. I'm going to be getting some feedback, and then I expect to return back to NC State for my last year of eligibility. Miranda is a bit of a different situation because coming into NC State when he committed to us, he kind of laid out that his plan was to play immediately and then start looking at the draft. Well, clearly it didn't play out that way as we did not see him on the floor. And, you know, he became the red shirt. There's a lot of speculation on are we going to lose him? Are we going to keep him? What's going on? We talked about this last week when he announced that, well, at least he said at least that uh, it's Wolfpack Nation or no nation, and there is something special coming next year. And then we see this come out today. I do think people are getting very caught up in just the specific wording of the tweet itself. I think it's a little bit misleading. I know, yes, they technically entered the NBA draft, but it's more so of a early entrant list. So it's not like they're not gone per se. They're just, it's the same thing that Traquavion did last year. You enter your name, you go through the process, you get your feedback, and then you make your decision. They have until, I believe it is May 31st, to make mm -hmm. their decision. So we still have another month to kind of sit on our hands and uh, wonder how this is going to play out. But I, I, I would like to at least ease the minds of some because I don't think we're going to lose either one of them. I think you're going to see both of them uh, in the red and white next year. Absolutely. And, and let's talk for just a second here about Isaiah Miranda in particular, okay? Because Casey gave us the timeline and Isaiah Miranda, everybody's predicting what they think is going to happen and what they, I'm not hearing any confirmed information. I'm not going to lie and tell you I'm plugged in with Isaiah's camp, I'm not. But I have not heard a lick of confirmed information one way or the other um, from Isaiah, for, from anybody close to Isaiah, from anybody close to the program. And trust me, I, I keep my ear to the streets now. If you don't know nothing else about me, whenever there's news about the Wolfpack, I'm putting in some calls. I'm saying, hey, what's going on? What do you know? Who do you know? Uh, to some folks who are normally in the know or to folks who are involved themselves. And I just want to say this, right? With Jaquavian Smith, I said, hey, he did us a favor and, and he had more money to make by coming back. He could come back again, but he'd be doing us a favor if he was. I said it with Peyton Wilson. He was doing us a favor coming back. Isaiah Miranda, on the other hand, is not in that doing us a favor category. 
brother, I'm I'm sorry to tell you this, and this is not a joke. This is not to denigrate these young men. Grayson, have you been following Jalen LeCue's career? Oh man, <laughs> uh, I I say this with all due, due respect, but I have not because I don't know where he is. Josh Hall. He's we, in the we, same boat. Actually, no, I lied. We know we know where Josh Hall is. South Africa. Yeah, he's in the South African basketball. South he's Africa, in the uh, yeah. he's in the basketball that the um I don't know if it's basketball league Africa or uh, African basketball league. I can't remember which one it is, but I believe it's uh, the offshoot of the NBA over there, and he's in South yeah, Africa. I, I did yeah. actually know that one. Uh, Lequeux, I want to say maybe the G League because that's where I think I've seen him last, but I don't know. Okay. I'm not up to speed on where Lequeux okay. is these days. Now, Isaiah Miranda at last weigh in in terms of his public list of weight was 205 pounds. He's seven, what, seven one? Seven one. Seven one. Okay. So that will probably put him at center height. Right. And even if we were to say, well, hey, you're you're going to be a power forward. He last weighed in the 205 pounds. They said that he's put on a good amount of, of muscle mass, 15 to 20 pounds. So let's be aggressive and say 20. So you're up to 225. Congratulations. You're at the average forward weight. But in terms of centers, the average center in the NBA is 251 pounds. Brother, you're going to be going against guys every single night that have a 10th of your body weight on you. And you're doing so with your transition being from a prep high school to the NBA. No college, no G League, not even overtime elite. No nothing. Just high school prep to NBA. Historically, that hasn't worked out well for most guys. Yes, I know that that bad man from Akron is still doing it in year 20. Everybody ain't him. He is an anomaly. We'll an never anom- see that again. On on almost every level. Yeah. The majority of guys who came out of high school, closer to Kwame Brown, as Stephen A. Smith would say. <laughs> and that's just the reality. It's, it's, it's not, you know, we're laughing, but it's the reality of the situation that I'm, I am never going to tell folks, hey, you know, I've got my Wolfpack color glasses on and I don't care what anybody says. You shouldn't get paid more and, and come back to the Wolfpack. Hey, listen, if you can get paid at a high level and you've set yourself up for success in the future by your actions, hey, go for it. I just don't think staying in would be a successful result for him. Yeah, I I mean, like you just mentioned with Josh Hall and Jalen LeCue, those were two what felt like big miss opportunities for both parties involved. Um, I think he, I think there was even an article written by Josh Hall, or, or at least he was quoted in an article by Josh Hall's dad saying, you know, I think we should have taken a harder look at the college route because this hasn't really played out the way we wanted it to. And that that's that's tough to hear because when you have him committed and everybody's excited and then you ultimately choose what you think is best for you and your family, and there's no shame there. You got to do what you got to do at the end of the Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, to, to see it not go the way they want it to, it's just it's it's tough to watch it go down like that. So for Isaiah Miranda here with the the, the unique skill set that he has with a guy his size at his height, you and I guess at the, the what he can add to our front court depth this coming year with you know with Diara and Middlebrooks and Burns, there's a lot to be uh, excited about the it was the expectation of all the combinations of lineups we can throw at teams to keep them off balance. You talked about uh, Miranda playing at the four. You have a seven one guy playing the four. I'm not and sure then, there's and watch this. You can go from a lineup with a seven one guy playing the four to MJ Rice playing the four. Yeah, in the same game, and teams are going to not know how to game plan for that. It's going to be I, it's, it's a matchup nightmare. I mean, listen, so, you can know I mean, how, but you got to have the horses in the stable to do it. You can know what the what the scheme should be, but you go look and say, well, okay, we we got to got to match up with the seven one guy. Well, who do we have to match up with this this uh, kind of slasher over here, uh, coach? We, we, we yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, this all sounds great on paper, but we need it to look good on yeah, the court. For sure. But yeah, I mean, the amount of versatility we have in the front court. Of course, this is speaking a little bit selfishly as a fan, but. For Miranda, I think it is 
it, it will work out the best for him to come back to school, refine his game for at least a season, get get that full season of college ball under your belt in, in ACC competition. I think that's going to benefit him in the long run further than making this immediate jump from prep ball to wherever he would land, which I presume would probably be the G league. Uh, Cause I, I don't see him getting drafted by any means, but I think it's gonna, I think he should really take a long, hard look at this. If I mean, he is, I'm sure, but I hope he's getting good advice from the people yeah. in his camp. I hope he's yeah. getting the advice that's going to suit him best rather than, the advice we've seen occur to a couple players here in the past couple of years that skipped out on college and has not exactly panned out the best for them. But yeah, selfishly, I want Miranda here. I want to see him in the Wolfpack uniform. Uh, I speak for a lot of people in saying that, but we're going to have to wait and see. we got about a month to find out. And the thing is, Grayson nor myself wish bad upon these players, right? No, Regardless never. of the route that you take, regardless of what you decide, even if you committed and, and never stepped foot on the campus, we're not wishing bad upon you. We're simply saying, hey, brother, this is what the, the history has been. This is what the track record has been. This is objectively look at this thing and say, hey, we know that you're special and you're different and you have. Sure. Absolutely. But again. The reality is the reality. The numbers are the numbers. Over a large sample size, guys making the jump from high school to the NBA, again, sometimes you have your Dwight Howards, your J.R. Smiths, your, your guys along those lines, and sometimes you have your Sebastian Telfairs. There's, there's a reason it has worked out significantly well for very few players. That's not... That's not by accident. It only works well for the freak athletes that end up making, you know, a big time name for themselves. So I hope that Miranda doesn't make, I guess, I don't know. I, I can't call it the wrong decision because it's his decision. It's not my decision. Yeah, it's, it's his decision. But, but I mean, we could, we could objectively say that you make the decision that again, statistically works out the best for you. Right. You come to college, dominate for a year, put up tape of you, being a, a beast leading us to a final four appearance, a lead eight appearance or something like that. The, what, why, why wouldn't it? Why right. would even not even leading us just being a crucial part of that team where you get to show off your skill set, where you get to show, Hey, I'm a big who can do all these things. I'm not just a, a Hey, I'm a shot blocker. I'm a rebounder. And that's it. You show off that you have a, a wide, a wide bag of moves and wide array of things you do well versatility never hurts especially in today's nba yeah and again I mean, if that if that's what he is said to have then he need the ability to show it off against a bunch of other guys who are looking to get drafted next year that's much better than saying well you haven't played in an actual game in what 18 months just about and that's that's what these teams are supposed to believe in come on back come on back yeah i just i i just think the the upside for him to come to college is just, it's ex. I mean, money aside, it's just exponentially bigger than it is at taking such a risk to jump in, jump into the draft without college experience. That's just my take on it. Exactly. And it's, it's a lot like the MJ Moore situation. We believe he's a good player. This isn't a, we think he's a, a, a bad player, bad guy, anything like that. It's very simply this situation, just like the MJ Morrison transferring, potentially transferring after spring ball. This is much in that same vein of look at the numbers, bro. It doesn't, it more likely than not doesn't work out well. It just doesn't. So that's, that's our take on that. And again, we want these players to make solid decisions, but also we, we look at the roster and see how is a successful team going to be uh, built out of what we have. That's, that's the important thing. And speaking of built, I've got to talk to you all about built bar. If you're looking for a delicious snack but you don't want all the sugar and calories then you need to try the best tasting protein bar ever that's built you got to try this and if you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices but you don't want to compromise on taste i've got just the thing for you built bars and built puffs man they're healthy and they taste amazing seriously they taste so amazing you won't think they're good for you because they're also good to you what makes built bar so good well for starters they're covered in 100 real dark chocolate that's right real chocolate 
and they come in unbelievably good flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and cookies and cream. So make sure that you go to built.com and get yourself one or go to Walmart. They're in your local Walmart. They're in your local Sam's Club. Go on in there. I saw some in uh, Lifetime Fitness when I was there the other day. Go on in there. Get yourself some Built Bar. All right. That's what you need. Go into Walmart. Get yourself a four box. Go into Sam's Club. Get yourself a 13, um, 13 bar box. Either way, you can't go wrong so long as you're getting yourself some Built Bar. Now, coming back, in in the vein of, you know, what is going on with what is going on with Miranda and what's going on with Marcel and all that. Again, we expect Marcel to be back. Miranda, that vision is a little bit more opaque, a little bit more fuzzy. We don't have a ton of, of clarity and whatnot. But I want to show you all something for 24-7 sports. Grayson, can you bring it up for me, please? This is uh, on three sports, but it's it's virtually the same deal. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Apologies. On three sports has uh, has Jaden Bradley, the five-star point guard, again, the, the playmaker supreme. By the way, shout out to Wolfpack Nation because y'all were dropping some big-time playmakers that were just like, man, that takes you back down memory lane. That's that's one where you like, you, y'all were in y'all Louis Duffel in naming some of those players. I mean, the finest of travel duffels with that one. But anyway. Jaden Bradley, formerly of Alabama, he was said to be a lock to Memphis. He was said that, hey, Memphis is the squad. Now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, my man Grayson tweeted it the other day, there's a shark in the water. And that shark's name is Kevin Keats. He got some real big teeth and he's ready to, he's ready to chop. He's ready to chomp. He's ready to chomp on something. I, what do you think about this situation? And how do you think the scholarship situation works out? If if we do get Jaden Bradley, if if I'm Penny Hardaway, I think I can hear the the theme to Jaws outside of my office. Kevin Keats breathing down his neck. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean this this ties in directly with kind of the Miranda conversation because if this turns into a situation where Miranda does choose to leave, um, we got a scholarship open, and that scholarship mm-hmm. can go to a guy like Jaden Bradley, but here's the catch to that because the transfer portal window, at least for this go round closes on May the 11th. That is two weeks from today. And as we mentioned, the, uh, the deadline to pull out of the NBA draft, the early list is May 31st. So obviously that does not line up. We're going to have to have one or the other occur uh, before that We're not, it's, it's not, it's not a puzzle piece. It can't fit in at the same time. So, this is going to be something to monitor in the next two weeks. You know, we we mentioned that Jaden Bradley would be a, a humongous get for Kevin Keats. That being said, we don't have any scholarships at the moment. So something has to give here. I don't know what is going to give, but something has to. Jaden Bradley would be an incredible addition. Um, it's like we mentioned before, sounds like Memphis is literally and metaphorically fumbling the bag. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to pick up that fumble and run 75 yards down the field uh, for a touchdown, but that's just me. So this crystal ball, it looks uh, it looks pretty enticing. I don't know if this is accurate as of Thursday morning. I would love it to be accurate as of Thursday morning, but there's just a lot we still don't know. And another thing, we're just going to have to try and wait as patiently as we can uh, and watch this play out in real time. Hey, listen, Trilly D said that Jay Trilly Bradley, Donovan. Trilly Donovan said that Bradley is on the way. In Trilly, we trust. You understand me? In Trilly Donovan, we trust. And I am, I'm confused as to how the, the scholarship numbers are going to work out here. I'm not hearing anything about any players who, who we're expecting to depart at this point. And, you know, folks are telling us to stop telling um, certain players to play another sport and whatnot. And, and there's, some situations behind that that we're still waiting on an explanation for. But with that being said, I mean, again, the numbers are what the numbers are. That's that's not an exaggeration. That's not like a, a, a joke of any sort. Like, literally, the numbers are what they are. If we're still predicted as this young man's top school, we have 13 scholarships. We have 11 players on scholarship and two true freshmen coming in. 
<clears throat> yeah, I mean, simple uh, simple math tells me that something something would have to change if uh, if we were to land Bradley. But it's something we mentioned briefly here the other day. I guess this is just sort of the ugly part of this brand new, you know, NIL and transfer process is like you don't want to feel like you're forcing out players because I don't know to to me that just it seems little little grimy because I think a commitment when a player commits to your program that's a two-sided agreement because the program is committing to you as the player as well and to then force them out down the road I don't know I, I don't know how I feel about that per se but you have to factor in that Everything has changed now. This is more so a business, it seems, than years past. And like, and, the- and that's that's my whole point with this thing. Yeah. Like, I understand the the feeling. Trust me, as a former player, I understand. I have seen it intimately, closely. I get it. I understand how nasty it can be and how personal it can feel. I want everybody to decouple this idea that it's not a business. I want you to decouple. Every time somebody walks at the baseball stadium, you know what sound plays? Matthews Motors, we're the walking man's friend. You think that's free? (laughs) You think that's free? Ain't no free lunch. The the drinks at the concession stand. Why do you think they don't offer any Pepsi products? You think that's free? Got to pay for that sponsorship. The jerseys that are all Adidas. Do y'all think that this stuff is is free. And I and I know some of y'all are saying, well, what does that have to do with the T in China? What does that have to do with the players and the scholarship number? All of this is a business. There is no such thing as this, this thought of, oh yeah, they're doing it for the love of the game and all that. This is a business. That's what this is. Whether we want to realize it or not. If, if this is amateur sports, then I'm guessing that Dick Vitale has been getting paid in college credits for the last, what, 40 years? He would probably love that, though, the animal that he is. He would probably love that. I doubt it. I highly <laughs> doubt it. I don't care how, again, I don't care how noble and how, you know, how much we think that these players are just like, oh, yeah, I love. he get tired of taking English 801 at some point in time. <laughs> He'd get tired of having all those doctorates at some point in time. He needs food, lodging, car, all that stuff, just like everybody else. And the reality is, again, this is a business. As much as we hate it, as unfortunate as it is, trust me, again, a guy who gave three tendons for the university and understood that like, hey, I keep getting hurt. I can't do what I need to do anymore. There's going to be somebody coming in to replace me. It's nasty. It hurts. It's the game. It's, it's. I've said this a couple times. I'll say it a thousand times. When you have an opportunity to land a player like Jaden Bradley to supplement the the transfers that you already have, you take that shot every single time. Exactly. Exactly. And again, and and here's the thing. My politic on this is consistent because when I when I talk about players, have I ever said, "Oh, this player." shouldn't transfer even though they have a higher earning potential over there. No, no. When players transfer from NC state, if they're going to a better situation where they're going to play more, where they're going, Aaron McLaughlin, did y'all hear anything bad about, Oh, Aaron, you don't have a winner spirit. You don't compete. You no, I think you could play more. I think, I think you do good things wherever he goes. That just ain't here. Let them go. Let them go. There've been plenty of players that have transferred out that I'm just like, Hey man, more power to them. Let them go on about their way. What, what are we, what will we hold somebody here for? There've been players who've gone to the league that could have had eligibility to come back. And I'm like, Hey, why, why will we hold them? Why, why will we keep them here? What, what will we do? I'm, I'm for everybody doing what's best for them. And it's unfortunate that at times players doing what's best for them. I mean, state is going to be on the short end of the stick. And at times, State doing what's best for them means that players are going to end up on the short end of the stick. We hope that that doesn't happen. If ifs and buts were berries and nuts, squirrels would never starve. And here we are in the real world. Okay. My my personal favorite about ifs, if ifs was fifths, we'd all be drunk. And yet Grayson and I are sitting here, you know, sober. 
sober, clean as a whistle. So that's that's just that's that's the situation here. But again, we'll we'll see how these uh, scholarships work out. We'll see the situation uh, with Jaden Bradley. We'll keep a, a close eye on that. We're going to close this thing out in just a sec after a quick word from our sponsors. Now, of all the things that are going on today, one thing that had uh, some Wolfpack fans in a tizzy, if you will, was our own, you know, the the favorite here, one of the fan favorites here in not just Raleigh, but I, I think he's he's starting to grow his presence throughout the ACC a little bit, is a young man by the name of DJ Burns. And, and he, he alluded to something that had a lot of folks worried, concerned, confused. He said, tomorrow at 11, on Instagram Live, he's going to be making an announcement for the next big move, which that means that tonight at 11 p.m., y'all go to go to DJ's page because... I think he's talking 11 a.m. So this is 11 a.m. on Thursday. Ah, 11 a.m. I'm sorry, 11 a.m. You could, you could be listening to us right now, and he could be about to break this news. Yeah, yeah. Or he could have already broken it yesterday, and, and we're we're a little, a little behind here. But either way, <laughs> either way, what I'm trying to tell you right now is DJ Burns has an announcement, and a lot of people are tripping, bumbling, stumbling, clumsy because they're falling in love. Wait, no, that's Fergie. Uh, plenty of people are, are very concerned about this. I think it's just a new NIL announcement. We've heard about the Savage, the, uh, Savage Wolves NIL Collective that's been picking up some steam here. And I think that he's just potentially going to come out and announce something along those lines, but you know, there's no such thing as, as a uh, bad press. And this is one of those things that got folks riled up, got folks in the tizzy. Seems like there's some good press. What you think, Grayson? When I, yeah, when I saw this, I had a brief moment where I clenched up and then I immediately went into FBI mode to try and find some answers as quickly as I could. He posted on Instagram announcing this as well. And I noticed in his post, tagged was a a NIL firm related with NC State. Uh, I think that's a dead giveaway that that's exactly what this is going to be. I think this is just going to be an NIL deal. So if you are worried, exhale. I don't think DJ's going anywhere. Um, he's hinted several times that he's intending to stay in Raleigh. Um, so I, I don't think we're going to be stunned by any news on Thursday. I hope I don't have to uh, look back on this and weep because I was wrong, but I don't think I will be. I think it's just going to be an NIL deal. Yeah, hopefully that's the case. Hopefully it's some mellow, you know, something that everybody can enjoy and laugh at and calm down about later. But we we shall see. We shall see. Um, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on it if anything happens with it. We'll be here to tell you all about it because, again, Wolfpack Nation, y'all make this show what it is by showing up every single time. We appreciate y'all so very much. Peace and love, y'all. And as always, go Pack. Go Pack. You are locked on NC State. Your daily podcast on the NC State Wolf Pack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.